I want the other cute graphics on the front. Three, two, one, let's start. Guess how I can study four subjects at once. Mm. I find anatomy, microbiology, and pharmacology very fun. And yes, come roast me. It's about the cognitive process that you can see on how I understand note taking and play. Hello, welcome back, wannabe lifelong learners. I am Priscilla and I'm a dental and psychology student. Do you ever have the moment right before final and this happened? When I scroll through my notes of advertisement, I do not understand this. The problem here is that those notes are so out of context. No worries, we're gonna figure it out. I've got you. The FOMO of not recording down information that the teacher says is very real. After a 190 minute lecture on advertisement, I feel like a information hoarder. So the problem we're trying to solve here is that we want knowledge to accumulate. Basic science will be the foundation for higher orders of science. We want to have access to our information right at our fingertips when we want to apply to a problem. It is to think in concepts. When I was scripting this video, I was thinking, how can I explain the word concept? We don't want to learn on a foundation of toothpicks. Hello, my big ass face. So now we're gonna explain concepts in a little experiment and see why we need to build our foundation with structure in order to build on top of it. Instead of not holding me as a 51 kg female, we're gonna hold a box of candy on gummies and toothpicks. So apparently this is not enough. We probably need to make like a whole hexagonal thing to sustain that box. Right Woohoo! Time for the experiment test. So I think it's gonna fall in like three, two, one. Bye bye. But at least you can see it sustains it. You can see how strong a triangle is in an architectural structure. And think of a painter who does not have their paint ready when they are starting to paint. It feels a pain and as to run to the cabinet to get the paint. We want to get in the flow and deep work to get the most of our minds, right? I have no idea how to reuse concepts that I have learned from a year ago to context now. The golden rule of learning concepts and practicing is one to five. One minute of theory learning and then five minutes of application and practice. And yes, procrastination and self-doubt is part of the note-taking process. Here I am going to reveal the secret sauces of how we can use concepts in note taking. First one is linear thinking. This thinking style will be phrased as step by step progression where a response to a step must be done before taking the next one. A simple model is if A then B. Most information and videos are presented to us in this outline hierarchy formula. In this level, I am not utilizing concepts. I will be stuck with putting one concept in one subject. Move up to the second type of thinking process, second order thinking. Thinking of the indirect impacts and asking yourself and then what? This type of thinking style, we will ask if A happens, B and C might happen. There's three factors into more of a cause and effect relationship. I think of driving cars in second order thinking. When I step the gas pedal, what will change inside the car machinery? Third one is network thinking. This is my boo. I love this one so much. Imagine that my brain is a bingo ball and each number is related to each other. That's fundamentally how our brains connect things and make sense of the world, right? And Network thinking, I will picture the car as a whole. I will think in every nuts and bolts of the car, like the steering wheel, the gas pedal, the monitor, how those things all work together to serve the car. This is when one concept can be supercharged to many subjects. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Do you get the feeling of everything piecing together? After those three modes of thinking, how can I monitor my process? This is called Ooh. metacognition. Remember this word. This word will change your studying. If you type this word into Google, there are a bunch of literature out there on how metacognition can improve our learning abilities. There are three parts of metacognition. Planning, executing, and evaluating. If I don't like the execution, I can stop before everything goes wrong instead of just cramming. This method of note taking is switching between seeing the trees and the forest at the same time, zooming in on the textual material and then zooming out. Yes, it is so hard to apply those tips for the first time. And I have formulated four basic principles for you to apply to your own studying routine. No friends, no family, no pal. So the first principle is humans don't live in isolations, so are knowledges. 
This is a mindset you have at the very beginning. Let the connecting magic begin subconsciously. Just this past fall semester, I took classes on social psychology, behavior analysis, and principles of management. For those who don't know, behavior analysis is understanding why we behave the way we do. Social psychology is the study of how a context of situation will influence social behaviors. This week's agenda, the chapter of social psychology that I'm studying is attitudes and the components of it. So secondly, what to take notes of if I'm using concept thinking. Just follow ME. And yes, me. Follow me. What well, M stands for minor and E stands for easily understood. Anything I encounter in a lecture or textbook that is minor and not important or easily understood, it will not be included in my note taking system. It would just be a waste of time to take notes because I'm fear and anxious of forgetting. When I think in those criteria, I am also increasing my cognitive load. I want to embrace that difficulty in learning. Let me hug myself. Embrace. In addition, many literatures have shown things about desirable difficulty helps enhances our learning processes. The definition of attitude is evaluation of objects. That seems pretty straightforward. Since I have omitted the definition of attitudes, I moved on to a deeper concept that explains on the three components of attitudes. They are thoughts, behavior, and emotions. And I'm slowing to picture everything together. This is where metacognition comes in, where I can feel my understanding and conceptualization of things. The third step or principle is break the subject divider framework. I just want to learn the concept once and be able to use it, right? Why as humans we just like to put things in little boxes and stereotypes? Why? It's human natural tendencies to categorize things, but that's not how the mind works. We want to build our own networks of thinking. Revenant is a representation of what's going on inside my brain. And I just want to smash those categorization boxes. If you have smashed those boxes of stereotypes too, please feel free to smash the like button. It is time to switch to second order thinking. In Revenant, you can highlight any text and search up the word in the entire database. Very easy to dig through your own notes to find connections. I have came across the components of attitude in business too. Everything starts to pick vision like that light bulb just clicks in my mind. In business, I will have to change people's attitude to change their work behavior. We can dive deeper into on how an attitude forms. The textbook of social psychology mentions that attitudes can be formed by two methods, awkward conditioning and classical conditioning. For those who don't know, operant conditioning is shaping behavior based on consequences such as rewards and punishments. And classic conditioning is shaping behavior based association. And the concept of classical conditioning is also related to advertisements. Advertisements want to create an environment for the viewer to feel emotional experience and construct an attitude for the brand. And now it is used for conditioning humans' behaviors. Whoa, the brand is shaping my behavior unconsciously. And as I have established the relationship with principal management in changing human behavior and to advertisement of associating an attitude to brand's image, I can use the bidirectional linking function in RemNote. I tagged my old notes from behavior analysis to the social psychology chapter. As you can see, as I type through my notes, there are many bold blue texts. Those are notes of connection that I have made. I will write a little description after I tag the word attitude and explain how the whole context frames the concept of attitude. And now you and I are smarter compared to yourself in the morning. And then the fourth one is now time to review. I can use a mind map to clarify my thinking. I can even harness the strength of pattern recognition and metacognition. But if you don't like paper and pen, RemNote also has the function, which is the graph view. Click on the three dots in the corner to find the view graph function. I can use RemNote's references such as tags, portals, by their show links and universal descriptors. This is where the networks and concepts can be supercharged. So I tend to do those hard cognitive tasks at home in a comfortable environment. So now I've finished watching the lectures and textbook, I would ask myself questions such as, under what
keyboard condition, I would use classical or operant conditioning. And how can I be very mindful so I don't fall into the trap of spending money on things that I don't need? Head over to my iPad, you guys can see the whole process together, okay? Let me set you guys down here. Here are five secret principles that I use for my wrapping. There is an acronym for this, it's GRID. The first one is GROUP. I would chunk and group similar concepts together. In this case, the biggest one would be attitudes and I can branch off from here. This goes on to the second letter, that is R. R stands for reflection. And my map is a reflection of what I'm thinking. I stand for intentional and interlinked. Be intentional on what I put on paper, not with a ton of words and just relating concepts here and there. Fourth letter is D. D stands for directional. I can label relationships such as cause and effect, associated, correlated, different, or similar. I can draw the directionality of how information flows. We have applied it classical conditioning and operant conditioning to four subjects. The first one is where original concepts of classical conditioning and operant conditioning came from. And the second one is the application of operant and classical conditioning under a business setting. Manager can use concepts of classical conditioning and operant conditioning to shape the attitudes of a worker and improve their productivity and performance. And the third one is advertisements. Classical conditioning and operant conditioning can be used to change our attitudes, increasing the potential of buying a product. The fourth one, social psychology. Attitudes can influence on how we talk to other people. See, those are four subjects that I've reviewed at once with using concept thinking. This is not using one stone to hit two birds. This is just using one stone to hit four birds at Something that seems like should be boring is very interesting just because I've changed my attitude. <laughs> Learning does not have to be governed by the professors. I can think and personalize it to my own needs. And I feel a sense of privacy and secret when I can change the processes and attitudes without people judging and seeing me. This type of concept note-taking style will be very bizarre at first, but I'm sure it will benefit you in the long run. I want to check out the video on how I extended my thinking from school to outside of school setting with personal knowledge management. Be ordinarily mindful and curiously fearless. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!